Hello there, Tom here from The Run Testers with another running shoe review. In this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V12. Let's dive in. The New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V12 costs £145 or $159.99. It weighs in at 283 grams or 9.9 .9 ounces for men in a size eight and the drop is eight millimeters. The New Balance Fresh Frame 1080 V12 needs little introduction. The last two versions of the shoe, the V10 and the V11, have been incredibly popular with runners looking for a jack of all trades, designed for everything from easy miles all the way up to race day. According to New Balance, it's the best running shoe they make, which may seem like a bold claim, but in this case, it's focused more on versatility than overall performance. At its core, the 1080 V12 is a cushioned daily shoe that's designed to be both comfortable but also offer a good level of responsiveness for faster training days. It's never going to compete with race shoes, but it's a daily trainer that ticks a lot of boxes. The midsole is made from New Balance's signature Fresh Foam X, a balanced material that sits slap bang in the middle of being soft and firm. The upper is made from a lightweight engineered knit which stretches as the foot moves, offering comfort and breathability. The 1080 V12 features an updated heel design with a foam padded collar. This moves the foot back slightly for a more snug fit. There's also a rocker design to promote a fluid transition and a healthy covering of outsole rubber for grip and durability. The shoe also comes in four widths, narrow, standard, wide and extra wide. So it comes to the fit, I, I found that the V12 of the 1080 was a bit longer and roomier in the toe box than previous versions of the shoe. I think I'd have been quite happy going half size down in the latest version, whereas in the previous versions they were completely true to size. That said, I have been perfectly happy in my normal size in the shoe, but it is a slightly roomier toe box than on the previous versions. So that's something to look out for. The fit for me in the 1080 V12, I would say is true to size, but due to the changes that have been made in the heel structure of the shoe, it means that the heel sits a bit further back in the shoe. So there is a bit more space than you probably expect from the V10 or the V11s. As a result, you probably want to size down half a size in this shoe if you're concerned about the extra space. I'd stick with my size, but there's definitely extra space in this shoe. I'm a size eight, this is a size eight, and I wouldn't have uh, sized down half a size, but some people, it might be more noticeable. So possibly size down half a size. So the 1080 range, the V10 and the V11, got pretty good reviews from us because they, it's, it's a, they were really solid shoes that just sort of ticked a lot of boxes for runners that want one shoe maybe to cover them off from easy day miles all the way up to, to race day. And I know a lot of people that bought this shoe for London Marathon and it was their first marathon. They wanted one pair of shoes that do the whole thing. Um, the V10 and V11, were great at that. They they sort of ticked all the boxes. They never really excelled in any area, but they could do a lot of things to an extent. So you could have comfortable easy miles in them, relatively comfortably, and you could go up to race day and it would it would give you a little bit of versatility to do the race. Um, but the problem with the 1080 range in the V12 is that nothing's really changed a lot since those two previous versions. And for many other brands, including New Balance, there's lots of other shoes that exist and have been developed over that time that really excel in many areas that the 1080 V11 and the V10 originally was aimed at. So you've got the new uh, fuel cell foam shoes that um, come from New Balance and there's some amazing shoes in there that you can use for very similar reasons to this. That fuel cell foam is a bit softer, a little bit bouncier, a little bit more conducive to running faster, but also is nicer on more comfortable, easy day runs. It's just a very versatile, enjoyable foam to run in. The Fresh Foam X midsole foam in the 1080 V10, 11 and 12 is, it's a good foam. It ticks a lot of boxes. It's sort of a nice balance between firmness and softness, but it's not exceptional in any way. It doesn't really deliver anything that you, you run in it and think, wow, this is amazing for that. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. People don't necessarily want a shoe that's gonna make an experience on the run that is really noticeable. But the problem with the V12 is that it hasn't really changed since those previous versions. And there are just better shoes out there at the moment that do the things that this shoe aims to do. I've done about 40K in this shoe so far, but I've done loads more in the V10 and V11 and really not a lot has changed from those shoes. What I would say uh, running in this shoe is that it's, 
Not a shoe that you think about when you're running in it. You can take it out for pretty much any run you go on. I've done lots of easy miles in it and uh, even done some intervals and faster efforts for my marathon training plan. And it's fine. I don't think about the shoe that much. I think it sits on the feet, is very comfortable and you, yeah, you don't really notice anything from it, which is great. That's, that's not a bad thing to have in a shoe. It's basically because it does a lot, but at no exceptional level there are the shoes that do the things it does better but maybe don't have necessarily the same amount of versatility for all the different people it's a shoe designed for everyone so anybody can pick up the shoe and it, it will do the job which is basically what the 1080 range does it's a shoe for everyone but if you're looking for something specific in a shoe you're probably not going to find it in the 1080 v12 i do actually like fresh foam x as a midsole foam and i think it has a really good balance of being a little bit firmer, a little bit more stable than some of the, the other foams out there, like maybe Fuel Cell, definitely things like Zoom X that you get in the um, Nike Invincible. Um, but equally, it's also slightly soft. So for cushion runs, it will protect you. It will minimize the impact on your legs. The More V3, which is my favorite cushion shoe at the moment, has a lot more of that Fresh Foam X in. And when the Fresh Foam X is um, there's more of it added, you can actually start to really feel the cushiony benefits in the more V3. In the 1080 V12, it's there, but it's not really that noticeable. So yeah, I think it's it's not a bad shoe. It's just a very solid general shoe. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of competition out there these days with shoes and it just doesn't excel in any area where it may possibly did excel against a lot of other shoes maybe two years ago. So I've done about 40K of running in the New Balance 1080 V12 and tested the last two editions of the shoe as well. Um, I've done mostly kind of easy runs, you know, kind of base training with a one progression run and a few strides chucked in as well. So it's got a fairly muted ride. It does protect the legs quite well, but there's not a lot of excitement underfoot. It's not particularly soft, I don't think. You know, it's not, it's not firm or anything, but it's not a very, very soft ride. There's not a lot of bounce there, but, and there is you know a bit of a rocker going on, but I don't think it's as smooth as some of the options out there with rockers like the Nike Infinity line, for example. I, yeah, I didn't really find it all that exciting in truth. Like it did, a, it did an okay job. Like I didn't love using it for anything kind of beyond the easy paces. Like it can do that, but it's not the most enjoyable shoe to run quick in. It can feel a bit blocky and cumbersome at times. And although it's comfortable, when I had an all out kind of easy recovery run in the morning, I really didn't like the shoe that much. Like it wasn't hard or anything, but it did just feel I was dragging the shoe around. It was kind of not in rhythm with me when I was running and yeah, I didn't particularly love it. It does a you know a decent job across a range of training runs, but it doesn't really excel at anything, I don't think. And certainly uh, I just didn't find it easy to click with the shoe at all and get into a nice rhythm with it. It never really disappeared on the foot. I was always quite aware of it. Not because, um, and although it wasn't ever really terrible, I never felt that it was you know a shoe that I wanted to reach for ahead of others in my pile of testing shoes at the moment. <laughs> I think most runners could buy and enjoy the 1080 V12. It's, you know, it's a decent daily trainer that can handle a lot of miles. I think if you're a newer runner, it's a shoe that might work quite well as an all-rounder option, and you could use it for kind of longer races as well. The problem I have with it really is it's, it's just not really standing out to me in any way compared to lots of other shoes that have come out lately that I do prefer to it. Especially like in the high-end cushion category, I really like the Nike Invincible 2. It's got a very unique, soft, bouncy ride. It's really fun to use for your kind of easy runs. And then there's something like the Brooks Glycerin 20. It's got a much more dynamic ride with an updated midsole, a nitrogen-infused midsole that, you know, it's a shoe I always want to reach for and I always want to do more miles in because it's got a lovely, energetic ride that, you know, really, um, makes you know going out and logging those miles feel a bit more fun uh there's some of the on cloud monster which is lighter than the shoe a bit more versatile while actually feeling a bit more comfortable as well like there's nothing about the um 1080 v12 that i think really stands out uh in a particularly great way like i think it's solid it's protective it will work it will do you can do your miles in it and enjoy them and if you're a long-term fan of the line i don't think it's really going to disappoint you uh, i just think it's slipping behind a lot of the competition with this latest version I also think that you can get cheaper, much cheaper daily trainers that do a better job, really. Like there's the Puma Velocity Nitro 2 for £100, which I think is just better in every way than the shoe. It's lighter. I think it's as comfortable, probably more comfortable, and it's got a much bouncier, more energetic ride for fast running. Then there's the Nike Pegasus 39 for just over £100, which I think is more comfortable than the shoe, and again, lighter, more versatile. Yeah, I think it's just you know a perfectly fine shoe. It's a it's a reasonable update to the line. They've not wrecked the 1080, and and there has been times in the past where I've quite liked the 1080 as a shoe. I would recommend as a solid option to newer runners. It can do a lot of mileage, and you can race in it as well. But with this latest edition, I think there's just too much other stuff on the market that 
it impresses me a lot more at the price and actually for a lot less. So it's one that I wouldn't really recommend rushing out to buy. But if you are a big fan of the line and want to stick with it, then I think you'll be quite happy with this new version of the shoe. So my verdict on the New Balance Fresh Foam 1080 V12 is it's fine. It's, it's a fine shoe for doing most things, but doesn't excel in any area. If you get this shoe, you're not going to be disappointed. It's not going to make you annoyed by running in it. Equally, you're not going to be wowed by it. You're not going to be telling your friends about this amazing shoe. It's just a shoe that does the job. Very conventional shoe. It feels like how um, running shoes have felt for the past five years and doesn't really bring in anything new to that. Um, but for many people, that's not a bad thing. It It's not going to be a problem for most runners because it has enough of everything to tick the boxes without having any major flaws. So that, that midsole foam, great, nice and balanced, bit of stability, bit of cushioning, N doesn't lack anything, but then again, it doesn't have anything either. The upper is also very comfortable. Um, so it's a great shoe for just general runners. If you're a first time runner and you want a, a general shoe to wear for your training, maybe you're training for a marathon, maybe you just started doing park runs, it's, it's fine, you'll, you'll be completely happy with it. And if you can get it at a cheaper um, price, it's probably quite a good option. I would say the V12 is probably a little bit too expensive for what it is, especially when you compare it with other shoes out there at the moment. Um, so if you can get the V10 or the V11, the only major difference is this heel section at the back. And the heel section at the back is um, significantly more padded than in the previous ones. There was a lot of discussion around the spacing of the heel section in the previous versions, making it a little bit slippy on people's feet so they couldn't get a lockdown fit. They fixed that now, so I think it's it's a superior shoe to those shoes, but not massively. So if you can get the V10 or the V12 cheaper, I'd probably go for those. Ultimately, I think it comes down to what you want from the shoe. So if you want a very general running shoe that you can use for lots of different types of runs, I think there are many better options out there at the moment. Shoes like the A6 Nova Blast 2 do a very similar job, but they're just a little bit bouncier, a little bit, you'll get a bit more from that shoe. I, I prefer the Nova Blast 2 to the New Balance uh, 1080 V12. And there's also cheaper options. I know Nick has mentioned the Peg, Peg 39 as well as the Puma uh, Velocity Nitro 2. Both great shoes and significantly cheaper um, from what you'll get here. So there are many other options out there. If you want to go faster and you want a daily trainer that veers more towards speed than cushioning, something like the Saucony Speed, uh, Endorphin Speed 3 is a good option. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different shoes that you can get that excel in the areas that this shoe doesn't. So I think there are better options, but you're not gonna be disappointed with this shoe. That's it from me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got for latest road and trail shoes, as well as running watches and headphones out at the moment. And don't forget that we now have a monthly podcast. Um, and if you go into the link in the caption below, you can subscribe to wherever you listen to your podcast so you get notified when the next one pops up on the channel. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon.